aging face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up guys, and of course, welcome to our Pokemon Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle, this time versus Benutrans or Trevor, and uh, yeah, I mean, going into this team here that I have here with me is Klefki, Glacopod, Orocorio, Alolan Muck, um, Lizan Rock, and Gengar, just thrown together, nothing to it, uh, just want to have the stacking and very, very good offensive pressure mods, and poison types in general, very, very good in meta, so I kind of wanted two of them. Mainly Gengar, but Muck is just a, such a great defensive wall and works really well with Golisopod. So, kind of figure I worked them into the team. It's not by any chance of imagination, you know, a good team or anything like that. I just wanted to use them on themselves. So, no prior, no acknowledging here whatsoever. I am facing off against a team that it's clearly, you know, making my day a, a lot worse here. Uh, Bustle, Cortana, Celestila and Toxapex are just, wow, such a ferocious team there. They've got Toe Cannon and Primarina, which, yeah, thank God, because if they were even more UEs or any Tapus, I'd probably, you know, I'd probably freak out, though I clearly did that, but not as much. And I really had no priority ever going into this battle. I knew I needed the Hazard stack. I I really want to force the switches, but it has a lot of Pokemon that doesn't necessarily care about switching out. And uh, the likes of Cortana is a super super ferocious mod for me to deal with, which means Oricorio might actually be my overall best mod versus him, because that mod at least outspeed everything on his team and can KO most of them. So Oricorio, most important Pokemon for this battle. So really, with all of this said, let's see how this battle turned out. So right from the get go, he was gonna have a bustle. I was like, oh, okay. So probably a superpower is gonna come my way, and really there are only so many things I can do against that. But at least I can you know, try to uh, maneuver this Pokemon whatsoever. So I'm gonna bring a Sasol, hoping for you know, a superpower because he has to go for it. And if it doesn't go, go for Leech Live, I can resist that. So, uh, yeah, that works. He had Dynamic Punch of all the things. Uh, he goes for Shadow Ball here. I get the Special Defense Drop, which is awesome, as I see him being able to switch up moves. So he's not a bad headset, which means I'll survive his Stone Edge, but not comfortably whatsoever. So. Anyway, due to him getting a special defense drop, I will keep going for Shadow Ball since it's very likely for it to KO him at that point. It's very likely, by the way, that that um, Buzzle is Assault Vest. I'm not sure here. Anyway, so this uh, comes in, and uh, while I do have Thunderbolt, I am actually Scarfed, which is not ideal here. The Oricorio is my switch in. He's gonna go for Flamethrower, and um, I'll actually take this fairly well. I mean, it's not, you know, mmm, thank god I took it. It's more like, oh shit. It did damage on me, but at least I'm standing. So at this point, I kind of figured that he either going to leech like me or do something else, like protect. So I decided to go for a calm mind, mainly here actually trying to force him out. And um, I kind of figured I took one calm mind, flamethrower or flash cannon, whatever it goes for, shouldn't push me over 50%, which means I can root that off if I so desire. Now, he sees, of course, I'm setting up and switches out and go to Fruit Loops. Which, of course, being a Tong Cannon, as I do believe, I go for Revelation Dance. And that's a Tong Cannon out. So, no Fruit Loops, no Tong Cannon. <laughs> I, I had no idea I would knock it out. But yeah, clearly, Oricorio is a much, much ferocious mod that one could imagine. Now, here's the thing I am at 50%. I cannot take a stab move for this guy. Even though it is resisted, it still hurts. So he go for Night Slash here, which is actually kind of good. Klefki takes it really nicely. And he was a point kind of figure that Klefki may or may not actually be important to keep around. Because there are really nothing this can do against him. So he'll go to Primarina, as I do believe I go directly for the T-Wave. Mainly because I kind of wanted to shut him down so Oricorio can KO the Carton on a switch in. Uh, so Primarina is in and I was like, mm, yeah, do I, do I stay in here? I am specially defensive and I kind of want spikes up, so decide to actually do that even though I kind of figured that it could be a dangerous ordeal depending on his set. So he has Sparkling Aria instead of uh, Hydro Pump, which, you know, fair enough. And for me being special defensive, that thing hurts. That is just wow. So clearly that is Specs and um, I can't stay in, so I gotta go to Spit Spot. Uh, which is more of a special defensive wall for this kind of environment. Having that said, you know, knowing that it is Pex, it just, woo still does damage on me and it does so much. Uh, I think I actually decided to go for a knockoff here over Curse, mainly because Celestia is always going to be switching, so 
It's good to kind of shut it down from recovery. A leaf seed is there, definitely, but that's about it. So, Spit Spot is gonna, of course, switch out there because I don't want to get leeched. As I go back to Oricorio, I know I can take any moves for this guy. As it goes leech seed, it is okay. Uh, at this point, I have to kind of figure do I roost? Do I attack him? Uh, as stated before, he has no Pokemon that can take, of course, my stabs really well. So, I should probably have gone for Revelation then. I do actually optimize for Roost here, mainly because I kind of want to switch in and out more often than not. And from this position, one has to really take into consideration that while I do get recovery back here, and I you know, probably could take a hit from Kurtana, it's, um, it's not worth risking. It is definitely not worth risking. So, Klefki is probably switching yet again. And since my... Or actually, does Bite, huh? I, I was smarter than I thought. Anyway, so go to Night Slash. I should be able to take this, no problem. And frame him out with a first impression. Uh, we're not assaulted for this battle. I like our Citrus Berry, mainly because I kind of want to stay in. And uh, it should work really well in my favor. Now, he'll bring Toxic Effect, which is awful. Um, Toxic Effect kind of walls Golizapod really well. Yeah, a bit too well, actually, because, of course, the Toxic... Or, I mean, the Black Sludge. So... I can't stay in. Now, Oath Keeper, of course, Glyphki can deal with it somewhat, because mainly, uh, what is the consideration that, um, you know, Skull is probably his only move. If it doesn't, if it has to do with Stab, you know, so be it. It still wouldn't necessarily hurt me all that much. And I am able to, of course, force up a layer of Spice. Toxic Pact, for me, is not a tough Pokemon for me to deal with whatsoever, mainly because anything that's Poison-related, I can Curse set up with my Muck with, so I, I am fine. So his go to his Moscato or Mosquito or Mosquito, I have no idea. Did you know that that Pokemon is filled with blood? I actually heard that this was a Mosquito Pokemon or a Buzzhole actually have eaten something. It's filled with blood and that's why it's so pumped up. Just It's worth noting. Anyway, uh, I kind of figure he'll go for yet I give him the Punch. And I actually get the Toxic Spikes out of the way because I'm grounded. But he goes for Leech Life. And I was thinking, why the hell would you do that? Why the hell would you go for That would have been four times resisted. But, you know, fair enough. And here I was thinking, you know, wh what do I do now? Uh, Gengar was such a solid switching. So I'm bringing back Oak Keeper, and this time I'm actually going to paralyze it, because it gets the beast boost. It just get that much more dangerous when you're trying to cope with, trying to outmaneuver. So having it shut down the speed or any possible paralyzation will help me. Well, here is, of course, the reason one should carry superpower over Dynamic Punch. Missing and it's a very very real deal now. I'll go for foul play. I was so sure it was gonna kill But this Pokemon is so bulky. It's not even funny. Luckily. I do get him fully paralyzed here Which means I have two turns of me just living and I gotta optimize to go for play rough Clearly that was was to be considered a better choice. I was really thinking you know with attack boost That you know that was gonna be an easy KO, but no 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 this this mosquito is just taking it. While I do KO it, it was not an easy ordeal, and I come out of it really lucky, considering the situation itself. So he'll go back to the pre Marina, and I still have my dedicated switch in the muck. Uh, just, I don't fear. This Pokemon says, of course, it only utilizes on Psychic, possibly, and I'm still a Dark type. So I'm not worried, and quite frankly, it's my golden opportunity of actually pulling something off. Now, he shows me hidden power ground. And luckily I am Shuka Berry, but that did a lot of damage. It would easily have killed me if I didn't have a Shuka Berry for the next turn. Now he'll go back to his Celestia, and you know, he has to do it. Celestia is the number one switch in here. I'll optimize for Curse, mainly because I know I can get extra damage on it, because it's very likely to lead seed first or not protect, since of course we're knocked off already his uh, leftovers. So as it goes for lead seed, I will optimize for going for... Uh, the knockoff, and it will do roughly the same amount of damage, but I know I can force him for a protect next turn, um, and it, it is the ideal play for me to make, because at this point, uh, I do believe Oricorio, if it comes in safely, kind of wins me the game, and that's what I'm going to try to do, going to bring Oricorio, and I'm not going to set up this time, because I don't want to give him a free switch into Cortana, so I'm directly going to go for Revelation Dance, I need to do that. Ash, he actually pro probably predicted me to go for a Calm Mind, and it will punish him. It will punish him dearly, as of course Cortana just gets bopped by the revelation that the crit did not matter whatsoever. But it's just wow, such a powerful hit. So Primarina is a number switching. I have to go here. Uh, I'll actually go for a call of mine. I was predicting that maybe he has Ice Beam, but 
I didn't, uh, like, I realized that as with recall might have, oh god, I might actually screwed up a little bit here. Well, it might be true, but he's fully paralyzed, so I'm getting really lucky out of there, because the Call Mine, actually, I'm not sure whether or not I can take the Ice Beam, of course, after that Call Mine, you know, since, of course, this is a Space Pre-Marina, I am not sure I could have taken that. But anyway, we just KO it, and his next question here is Celestia. Celestia can't do anything here either. So what it all boils down to from here on out is whether or not the Toxic Pack can take my Oricorio on. Now, I already showed him roots, which means he can't stall me out whatsoever, and I'm Call Mine, which means that I even are outnumbered or are able to actually outmaneuver his possible recovery. So, as the Toxic Pack comes in here, he's actually just gonna go directly for the Baneful Bunker, which, you know, it's fine. I get it. Try to survive as many turns as possible. I I'm all for it. But there is no way of avoiding this, and Oricorios is a revelation dance due to my extra call mind here behind me are able to KO the Toxic Pack. So, that. It's a 5 of victory in my favor, but as stated here, I am a bit lucky here. I mean, the, the things that stands out here, of course, the full of paralyzation with Pre-Marina, and of course, the... Um, but also, Boss Hold getting, of course, fully paralyzed twice, or at least once, and misses a Mega Punch. It, it does make a lead way for me, it really worked well against him here. Sure, I could have brought Oricorio earlier, getting, of course, the Hurricane off, but it was a risk with that, and I couldn't risk Oricorio against Boss Hold, therefore, I did decide to paralyze it with Lefki. Um, so while I do win and I win a 5-0 victory, it's not necessarily a big victory on its own. It's just a few Pokemon clearly did stand out a bit more than the others. Uh, Oricorio's stabs was helpful for this game mainly because it just... It does so much damage. Cortana was still the fastest one on the field of my opponent's side and had he preserved it just the right way, he actually may still have actually been able to sweep me. Mostly because it is a very, very powerful Pokemon. And being able to speed a whole team mainly means you can come in and out and after once, you know, attack boost on that Pokemon, I'm not sure I could have dealt with it accordingly since my Klefki was kind of free falling there after Prima Nirina's hits. Uh, but yeah, with all that said, uh, Beatrice, thank you so much for this game. It was actually a really, really fun game. And, you know, I'm trying to, you know, win against Ultra Beasts are always a great time. Um, I feel I'm, I'm, I'm a much, much better player now and I feel I can outmaneuver properly, but it's very clear that you knew what you were doing, probably should have superpower all the time I punch, but I can't understand reason for it also, but it didn't work this time, but one might never know when that turns about really. But yeah, for everybody who's been watching, thank you for doing just so, and uh, I'll see you in the next video, clearly. <laughs> thank you so much for watching, take care everyone, bye.